that's what it is, right? No matter how in love I was, right? No matter how wonderful being with her made me feel, right? No matter how much lusting after women women was exciting for me, there was still this like, okay, something is not right. Something is missing. Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Kyla. Um, today I'm going to be just kind of doing like a ramble, rant, chit chat kind of thing um, based on just me kind of reflecting back on my testimony video. Um, so yeah, stay tuned if you want to just hear me ramble about life and how much I love God and how amazing he is. Um, but quick thing, if you haven't seen my testimony video um, that this rant is going to be about, please go ahead and watch that. I'm going to go ahead and link it above and in the description box. Also, if you're new, please subscribe to my channel so you can hear more rants. I'm just kidding. More of me just sharing God's glory and what he's doing in my life. And how I'm handling, you know, coming out of homosexuality. Um, go ahead and hit subscribe and notification bell so you can see when I post a new video. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so before I start, you guys, I just want to um, say a quick prayer that way. I'm just set in the atmosphere um, for this video. And that whatever you're going through, that you just have the right mindset to receive whatever God is going to be sharing through me um, on this video. So let's pray. <sighs> God, I just thank you for who you are. I thank you that you're the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, Lord God. I thank you that you've gone before us and you're protecting us from behind, God. God, I just pray that everyone who was watching this video, God, that their hearts are open to whatever you need to say, God. That whatever words you say through me fall on good soil. That whatever they're dealing with, whatever they're struggling with, that they cast it to you, God. Because you say, cast your cares to me, Father God, because you care. So I just thank you that there is no disruption, Father God, for whenever they're watching, that they are completely at peace, God, and that your word permeates into their hearts, so God, and transforms their mind. I decree and declare that they have the mind of Christ and that they are no longer bound to the sin because of the sacrifice that was made on the cross. I decree and declare that the sin that they're struggling with has no power over them. In the name of Jesus, that they are already free just by accepting you into their lives, Lord God. I pray that you continue to reach for them and that they reach for you, Lord God. I thank you that this video has no disruptions and that it just flows properly. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so lately God has been having me go back and watch my testimony video. And I'm gonna be honest, it's very uncomfortable for me to watch that video because um, it just reminds me of just, um, just how hard this journey is and just how broken um I really was um it's really hard seeing myself be so open and raw with people like I said before I'm really not a person who discusses how they're feeling so when God told me to make my testimony video um it didn't make any sense because it was just like I was still processing what was happening to me and honestly I couldn't even like get through the whole thing without crying because it's just it was just really hard like I'm just thinking um even like the transition in my life like nothing about this journey has made sense um I was only really a year into finding Christ and like learning to hear his voice and really just learning about obedience and just how much God loved me. It was almost like I wasn't surprised that God loved me, but based on how the world was portraying God, um, it just felt strange to hear the way that he viewed me as a, a woman, just a, as his daughter. Um, it was very surprising. Like, I remember being a little girl and being in church and church when you're younger is basically like you're going and you're like you're in children's church and they're teaching you about you know Jonah and the whale and you're listening to like talking vegetables and you you know you basically you hear about all the things that you shouldn't be doing right you shouldn't be 
doing this you shouldn't be doing that you're gonna go to hell for this hell for that like but they don't really teach you about how much God loves you and how much he sacrificed for you and how much he wants to do for you um I think we as people were really just naturally selfish to be honest and so we tend to portray God to be that way as if he he only has like a a few select people that he favors right as if like the good things that he does in other people's lives can't be done um in our lives or like we treat God as if he's someone that you can't have access to unless you've reached a certain level or you're like you're of a holier level than someone else right and really what I learned through my journey of trying to get you know getting to know Christ was that God is no respecter of person his love and his grace and his peace and all of the things that he wants to do is made available for everyone the people who really need God are the ones who feel the most excluded from the church and feel the most distant from him and that was myself included like I had this idea that I had to be perfect and um you know really polished in order to present myself to God and he didn't want any of that like he wanted me for me how I was deep in my sin far from him as I felt he he wanted me right there at that place so that he can get the glory for the transition, for the healing, for the restoration that he plans to plans to do in my life. And I'm like, I just thought to myself, how different would life be if instead of people holding signs up saying you're going to hell, and instead of people being hypocr hypocritical Christians and feeling like they're in an exclusive Jesus club, how different would it be if people actually started to live lives and love others like Jesus loves all of us like how different would your view of God be if you knew that he said that you were more precious than Ruby and how different would your life be if you knew that he had plans for you that were for good that were to prosper you and not to harm you to give you hope in a future plans to restore you make you whole so that you're lacking nothing how different would you feel about God if you knew that he would go to the ends of the earth to bring you back to him like how different would you be would your view of God be if you knew that he he has a perfect plan for your life one that will be full of purpose and impact one where you'll be a part of a larger purpose that can make this world a better place like how different would your view of God be if people started to treat you in love instead of hate? And so I used to ask myself on those questions, you know, when I was trying to find Christ, like, God, like, this is who you really are. Like, you are kind. You are patient. You are loving. You are wise. And you're not trying to set limitations on me. You're trying to protect me because you know what this world has to offer won't endure. What this world has to offer won't satisfy. And it just made me think like, where was this when I was in church? Where was where were the people that were teaching this message when I was out in the world, lost, broken, you know, with no trust? Like, how different uh, would your view of God be if you knew that you could trust him that he wants you to cast your cares every last little care that you have every deep every even down to the smallest detail how different would that be if you realized that he wanted you he wanted to carry all those things for you so you didn't have to suffer so you didn't have to be deep in a depression so you didn't have to walk around thinking that you can't trust anyone like my god like how could you not serve a god like that during my journey of struggling with homosexuality even as a child like I remember when I was younger and first realizing that I had you know same sex attractions and I would be like I don't know what to do with this like they say people like me go to hell right but it's like I didn't ask for these feelings I didn't ask for these attractions I don't know what to do with them I don't feel safe enough to talk to anyone about them. So what am I supposed to do with them, right? 
And so what do you do when you naturally don't know what to do with something? You Google. Well, what do I do with these feelings? And when I Google, I just found a bunch of happy people out here just living living their lives confident. And I was like, well, I mean, I don't know. I didn't ask for this. I don't know what to do with it. And there was nobody that was even speaking up. Like sexuality isn't even talked about in the church. Like you're temptations and stuff we we focus so much on like you know which we should be doing which we shouldn't be doing but what about like talking about topics that people actually need help with like things that they're struggling with that they didn't even ask for like same sex attraction like how how can where's the where's the advice where's the where's the scriptures on how to deal with temptation you know what i mean where's the scriptures that even explain to me why this is happening like where where was that kind of information and so I think that when we're young, we really don't under we don't have a relationship with Christ. Like our relationship is based on, you know, what other people, how other people introduce God to us, and basically like our parents' relationship plus the world's view. So it's really like there was nothing. Sorry if I'm rambling, but there was really nothing at the moment when I was a child that I could really do with those feelings because I didn't have a relationship with Christ for myself, and I didn't understand who He was and what happened on the cross when Jesus died and broke the power of sin. I had no idea what any of that meant. Therefore, how I chose to act upon those feelings was to test them out and live them out, right? Little did I know, I, it was basically, you know, a setup and a trap that when I got older, I would be so deep and entangled in lust that I would claim myself to be a lesbian, which is not how God identifies me, right? So which means that, okay, well, if God doesn't, you know, accept me for who I just claim myself to be rather than how he intended and designed me to be, then I don't need a relationship with God, right? And so that just, that long rant just brought me back to the point is like, you need a relationship with Christ to really understand your identity because he made you. He made me. He made me with a specific purpose and to say that for me to say that um that my identity is anything other than how he made me to be would be calling god a liar that doesn't make any sense because god is not a liar i can't believe one part of the bible and not believe the other i didn't write the bible i don't the standard of how of my beliefs is set higher and it wasn't made by me the standard for the Bible, like regardless of whether I agree or not with every single thing that's in there, the truth is the truth. And if I'm a believer of Christ, which I am, then I am subject to the truth of the word of God. And that is what it is. Okay, so that long rant what, um, led up to what I really wanted to talk about um, is how I got caught up, right? This is when I noticed that my life was kind of on the decline. Um, it was all fun, you know, obviously, like, when you first get into something new, especially, like, being in a relationship with a woman, you know, it's exciting, it's new, um, you know, you're having the time of your life, you're fulfilling the desires of your flesh, like, you're, I was in love, everything was going great, right, but then things really started to take, um, a dark slide when, um, this feeling like I don't even I keep trying to describe this feeling y'all but I think the Bible does it perfectly so in Galatians 5 19 right it talks about that you have an all-consuming but never satisfying want all-consuming never satisfying want right and I'm like that's what it is right no matter how in love I was right no matter how wonderful being with her made me feel, right? No matter how much lusting after women women was exciting for me, there was still this like, okay, something is not right. Something is missing, right? And I'm like irritated because I'm like, everybody out here on social media, everybody out here living their life looks so happy, so full, like they're you know having a time of their lives why am i so unsatisfied like to everyone else i had just graduated from college i was working at what i thought was my dream job um we were in a loving relationship everybody you know quote unquote relationship goals you have the perfect love life 
And I'm like, why am I so unsatisfied? Like, I finally got to the point where I'm comfortable with who I am. I'm out and I'm proud. Like, I'm at my pride events. You know, I'm in the community. Why am I still so unsatisfied? And that's what sin does. Sin can never satisfy you. Sin is always a deflection and it removes you from God. And we were designed to be with God, not apart from him. We were born apart from him, but designed to be with him. And so there's always going to be a void in our lives. And I'm like, ugh, why didn't I know this, right? And I'll tell you why I didn't know, because I thought that I knew who I was, what I was supposed to be doing for every detail of my life, and nobody couldn't tell me anything. My pride prevented me from seeing that I actually needed God in my life. And... I hope I'm not rambling. I hope I'm getting to the point, y'all. But basically what I'm trying to say is God was revealing to me through this journey that I will never be complete. I will never be whole. I will never be satisfied until he is a part of my life and it is his will that is done in my life, not mine. And that, my friends is the reason why you're irritated, you're frustrated, you feel like you have no purpose, you feel low, you feel like you know that you are were born to do something great, but you can't figure it out, you feel stuck, and the women that you're sleeping with, or whoever you're sleeping with, is never going to satisfy you because you need God. We were designed to be with God, not apart. And I'm like, okay, God, that's easier said than done. What happens now that I'm in love? And I built this life for myself. What am I supposed to do? Like, I've committed myself to this relationship. This woman is the best thing that ever happened to me. What am I supposed to do? Right? And there's only one thing I could do. Surrender. That's what I had to do. I had to surrender every single part of myself. Because who can live an unsatisfied life? Who can live a life without vision and purpose? Like, the Bible says we die for lack of vision. And I'm like, <sighs> all this sounds good on paper, but I'm like, God, you really don't understand. Like, you, we're planning our wedding. We're planning every detail of our lives, where we're going to move, you know, how we're going to spend the rest of your life. This is my best friend, God. Like, what am I supposed to tell her? What am I supposed to tell her? And you know what God said to me? He said, lead by example. And I'm like, what does that mean? And I think I learned that's just what surrender surrendering your life means is that even when it doesn't make sense even when you've gotten yourself in a place where it seems like there's no escape it's only there's no easy way out of sin newsflash there's no easy way out of sin you surrender your life to god and you deal with whatever consequences are facing you you accept the forgiveness that god has already given you and you move forward and you pray that god gives you the strength to endure until his purpose is completely fulfilled in your life. So yeah, that's what going back and looking at my testimony just, you know, reminded me of, of just how far God has brought me and how much discipline and obedience is going to take me to really get everything that he has for me. And I'm not stopping. So yes, I still struggle. Yes, I still have temptations, but none of that is more powerful than the power of God that lives within me. None of it. And I just say, I just want to add like one point. Whatever you sacrifice, whatever you give up to follow God is never in vain. God is a restorer of time. He, everything that you give up, it says no man who sacrifices houses, brothers, sisters, mothers. I'm just paraphrasing here. Basically, nothing that you sacrifice to follow to follow Christ is ever in vain. He is going to restore to you a hundred times more than everything that you lost. So even though I'm being like real, just kind of calm when I'm talking about this, like it is the most rewarding thing I've ever done is to be able to give myself in the basically the prime of my life while I'm young, completely over to God so that he has a fresh 
basically he has a living body to use for his glory like whatever god wants to do through me let it be his will not mine you know what I mean? whatever god wants to do through me i am all the way down for it because it's like i owe this man my life he gave me my life and i'm giving it back to him and what more honor can i bring to god by presenting myself as a living sacrifice to him despite my flesh despite whatever i'm going through like god has been so amazing in my life that i would do anything to please him and to make him happy i want him to be pleased with me like i remember when i was listening to the podcast tatum's podcast she used to always say like when i get to heaven i need to be empty like i need god to say good job my well good job well done my good and faithful servant like that's what i want for my life i want to get up there and he'd be like you did everything that i had for you i'd never want to get up there and he'd be like oh well this is the life you live and this is the life that i had for you these all of these amazing things and i'm down here like oh so because i wanted to basically live a selfish life and to be doing my own thing i could have brought so much honor to god like when you guys send me your testimonies it literally just brings me into tears because not too long ago when i had to make that video i was facing so much doubt and so much frustration with myself and i was just like I don't even this isn't gonna help anybody like me talking isn't gonna help anybody like the devil was really just trying to make me seem like I was just wasting my time by talking about what God had brought me out of and that is a complete lie like your testimonies really keep me going like for me it's all about bringing souls back to Christ and really helping you guys realize that God has made you such powerful people and he wants to use your lives for glory to bring other people to him so that they can be whole like this journey is not about me it never is but it's just like I'm so grateful for just all the amazing things that God has done in my life and I honestly should be talking about them more because I know I'm talking about this journey but um God has really blessed me with this YouTube channel to be able to discuss like how I'm feeling um, last year, my car broke down, right? And um, it was really frustrating because I'm, I'm a really independent person. And so when my car broke down, I you know, had basically had to depend on other people for an entire year. And then when I came back home, like I felt like a heavy burden on my parents and I wanted to be able to help with my sibling. And so I'm like, all right, let me go buy a hoopty. You know, I'm just like summarizing real quick about some things that God has done in my life. Um, but basically, like, um, my siblings always had to be somewhere. We were only sharing one car. And so I was going to go buy, a, like, a little hoopty or whatever. And God was like, no, like, I'm going to bless you with a new 2020 car, like your dream car. I put this car on my vision board last year. And it's an attempt to try to increase my faith. But I really didn't think I was going to get it or whatever. So when God blessed me with this car, the exact one that was on my vision board, I was like, God, what like I don't even deserve this and he had to change my language like you do deserve the things that I'm giving you you are worthy of the things that I'm giving you also last year around the same time that I surrendered my life literally um I had just started a new job and I was like a temporary employee right and um I was asking him like I was basically like tempt to hire which means that after a certain period of time they would like choose to hire you so that you could be full-time and I really wanted to be full-time because I needed benefits obviously I'm a growing adult I got needs whatever anyway they were saying it was going to take about a year for me to get hired full-time so I was just like patiently you know God had placed me at this job and so I was just being patient or whatever literally I'd only been there for four months when I got an email saying that hey we want to convert you over to four time full-time I'm like four months y'all just told me it was gonna take a year not my God. My God said, I want you there now. So just that on top, that's just like material things. But like the restoration that he's done internally in me is just like a whole nother video in itself. But I just wanted to encourage you that nothing that you sacrifice, nothing that you give up, God is ever going to be in, in vain. God is always going to make a way for you. And he's always going, as long as you're abiding and being obedient in him, he is going to move mountains for you. And I'm just excited to keep sharing what God is going to do in my life, what he's already doing, just to keep you inspired on this journey. Like this journey is not in vain. Trust me, this journey is not in vain. So yeah, you guys, thank you for listening to my rant. Um, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I will see you on the next video. 
If you have any suggestions for um, video topics, please leave them in the comments below. Um, if this video helped you, please let, leave that in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up. Um, but definitely, if you have suggestions, please leave those in the comments because I would love to be able to answer directly any um, concerns that you have or go to, go to the Lord on behalf of you, um, prayer requests, anything. Just please leave it in the comments. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.